an unwed teenage mother in a little town on the outskirts of the Roman Empire, a little place called Nazareth. It was so shocking that an angel had to be sent to her and tell her the news about God's shocking decision. In fact, an angel also had to be sent to her fiancé, who was ready to dismiss her because he thought she had been unfaithful. And the angels had the same message for both Mary and Joseph. And that message was, do not be afraid. Yes, it's shocking. Yes, it's unconventional. Yes, it is completely unexpected. But God's Son is coming here to you at this very moment. Sometimes Jesus shows up in the darndest places. <coughs> Who would have thought that God's son would be born in another out of the way little town, a little town called Bethlehem, again on the outskirts of the Roman Empire, in a dusty barn. It was so shocking that this time a whole heavenly host of angels had to be sent. This time to a bunch of shepherds out in the fields. And they had to be told the news about God's decision. And their message, the angel's message was, same as before, do not be afraid. Yes, it's shocking. Yes, it's completely unconventional. Yes, it's totally unexpected. But God's Son has come here to you in this place at this very moment. Sometimes Jesus shows up in the darndest places. Of course, we know where Jesus is sure to be found. In the Christian assembly, around the sacraments of baptism and Holy Communion, in the word read and preached and heard in the Bible, Jesus promises to show up for us here, just like we are on this Sunday morning. Those are sure and certain times when we know Christ shows up. But sometimes, where Jesus shows up surprises us. It's not just in our churches or holy places where God's Son can make an appearance. A pastor friend of mine shared with me when she went down to Washington, D.C. with a group of pastors and other Lutheran leaders who were there to do some advocacy work in the government. And they met with a man whose name is Scott. And he is the director of spending policies for the Center of Effective Government. Before that position, he was a portfolio manager. So this is a very rich and powerful guy. But when he met with this group of pastors and lay leaders, he didn't try to impress people with his wealth or his power. Instead, he shared a story of a time that changed his life. He was a college student in Baltimore, and he was one of the first volunteers for the Lutheran Volunteer Corps. Now, this was in the days before restaurants would give their extra food to food banks or homeless shelters. So Scott's assignment from the Lutheran Volunteer Corps was to go dumpster diving at a restaurant in Baltimore to find food that would be good enough to take to the local shelter. So there he was in an alley behind a fancy restaurant and he's looking at one of those big dumpsters, you know, the six yard dumpsters that you can throw big piles of trash in. And he's standing there and he's a little afraid and he's totally skeeved out by what he has to do but he takes a deep breath, and he jumps up, and he pulls himself, and he dives into the dumpster. His eyes adjust to the darkness, and he's sitting there, and he 
hears a rustling. And then he sees something moving. And he thinks it must be a, a raccoon or a really big rat. And he screams, ah! And then he hears a voice. Don't be afraid. There's plenty here for both of us. It was a man who was homeless, and he was there trying to get food for himself and his family. Scott called this incident Christ in the dumpster. And that encounter changed his life. Who would have thought that God's son would show up in a trash dumpster behind a fancy restaurant on the outskirts of Baltimore. The fact was so startling that an angel had to be sent in the form of a homeless man to Scott to give him the surprising news about God's decision. And the message given to this young man who would go on to a long and varied career in aspects of corporate social responsibility the message from that angel is the same one we've heard before. Do not be afraid. Yes, it's shocking. Yes, it's totally unconventional. Yes, it's completely unexpected. But God's son has come here to this place, to you, at this very moment. Jesus shows up in the darkest places. I mean, really, who would have expected Jesus to show up on that Sunday morning, three days after his crucifixion, outside of his own tomb, on the outskirts of Jerusalem, after having been crucified in the city dump just a few days hence? The fact was so startling that an angel had to be sent to the women who had come to the tomb to anoint his body and mourn his death. And the message given to those women who stood there trembling even more than the earth that rumbled under their feet, the same message we've heard before. Do not be afraid. You are looking for Jesus. He's not here. He is risen. Yes, it's shocking. Yes, it's completely unconventional. Yes, it's totally unexpected. But God's son has come here. He's alive for you at this very moment. As Christians celebrating this Resurrection Sunday in this beautiful red brick church in the country, nestled among the rolling farmlands in the middle of the Susquehanna Valley, it can be easy to forget that church is not the only place where Jesus can be found. We can sometimes get too comfortable in our pews and in our fellowship hall downstairs, but like the women who are sent out into the world, we are not meant to remain in our safe, comfortable places. Sometimes we are sent out to where we'd rather not go, among people who have no particular respect for our faith. And sometimes we're swept up into a moment of ministry that takes us completely by surprise. Vivian Marsh learned this when she went to visit a woman who was on hospice. Vivian is a member of our congregation who is a hospice volunteer. And she goes to visit patients who are nearing the end of their lives. The particular woman that she was visiting was in the advanced stages of dementia. She was in a nursing home. And she was seated on one of those big rolling chairs right next to the nurse's station. This woman had not been able to talk sensibly or in complete sentences for over a year. On this particular day, Viv came to visit her, and the woman was just sort of babbling and mumbling, but Vivian thought she caught the word church. She thought she heard the woman say church. And
And Viv said, oh, do you like to go to church? And the woman stopped her babbling and got very quiet. And Vivian said, I'll bet you like to pray. And the woman perked up. She said, prayer, prayer. And then she said, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This woman, who had not spoken a complete sentence in over a year, recited the entire Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught us as Vivian prayed with her. Two days later, she died. But at that moment, Jesus showed up for her and for Vivian. Who would have thought that Jesus would show up in a nursing home for a woman about to face her own death? But Vivian's presence was like that of the angel, and her ministry gave a message to that woman. And the message is the same one we've heard all along. Do not be afraid. Yes, it's surprising. But God's Son has come here for you at this very moment. Sometimes Jesus shows up in the darndest places. My friends, our ministry does not end when we hear the words, Go in peace, serve the Lord. In fact, that's when our ministry just begins. Tomorrow, you may be called upon to announce Jesus' presence to the world. Not necessarily by jumping on a crate outside of wise markets or starting to preach a sermon in the lunchroom at work, but maybe when you're interacting with someone who is hurting or you're responding to someone who's reacting to you in anger or someone who has shared with you some bad news. Jesus will need you to be the angel and assure them, do not be afraid. Jesus needs you to help prepare the world for Jesus' surprising appearances. Now this may seem like an incredible burden when you're already bogged down with so many other tasks in your life keeping up with the schedule of the kids and doctor's appointments and sports schedules. But there is good news in Jesus' unexpected appearances for you as well. Because just as you are called to minister in out-of-the-way and out-of-time places, sometimes Jesus shows up for you and ministers to you at times and places where you least expect it. Grace can show up for you and give you just the lift you need, the breath of fresh air to revive your spirit, the nourishment that you long for in your soul. When you receive the bread and the wine today, think of the places where you can carry the message of the angel into the world, telling them not to be afraid, assuring them with a gentle touch and a hopeful word from God. The brows creased from anger and worry need the news of Christ's presence. The hands cracked and blistered from work that pays too little and demands too much. The halls of government and corporate offices that need to know that the ground shakes under them with the demands for justice. And remember that Christ's presence is for your creased brow as well. Your blistered hands. Your tired feet. God's grace shows up for you in the same way. Remember that when you're holding the bread. 
what you offer to the world is given to you as well. Jesus meets you on the path unexpectedly, completely without warning, and says the same words of the angel, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers and sisters that I will meet them in unexpected places, in the wombs of unwed teenage girls, in the pastures of shepherds and feeding stalls of barns, in hospital rooms, and yes, even dumpsters. Jesus shows up in the darndest places. Yes, it's shocking. Yes, it's completely unconventional. But God's Son is coming here for you at this very moment. Hallelujah. <laughs>